Take a look at this picture. A bunch of Americans were asked to say where Iran was, and each little dot represents where they guessed. Only 23% of people actually got it right, and a lot of people guessed horribly wrong. You, you see some dots in America, you see some dots in the middle of the ocean, you see some dots in Europe and in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's like, what's going on? Even worse, in one study, 21% of Americans were not able to identify where the Pacific Ocean was on a map. If it seems like Americans are getting stupider and stupider every year, it's probably because they are. The education system is backwards and doesn't work. If you don't believe me, just think back to your own time in school and then try and come up with three things you learned that still matter to you today, right? Like, are you still using algebra? Are you still using chemistry? No. Politicians have been trying to fix this by imposing strict standards on schools and punishing the poor performing schools, but that's just making things worse. So A, what exactly is the problem? And B, how do we fix it? That's the subject of Sir Ken Robinson's book, Creative Schools. Robinson is a lifelong educator. He's worked in education all his life, and he thinks that schools are severely underperforming, they're broken, and we need to fix them. So how do we do that? The modern education system was built during the Industrial Revolution, back when factories were all the rage, right? If you wanted to get a job, you would go work at a factory. And that means two things. First of all, it means that the education system was built to prepare people to work in factories. And second of all, it means that the people who made the education system were thinking along the lines of a factory, and so they designed the school system to kind of work the same way that a factory does. The first thing means that schools don't really teach you to think, they just teach you to follow directions. And John Rockefeller, who was instrumental in building the modern education system, put it this way, I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. Of course, today we don't really need people to just blindly follow directions, and we can get computers to do that. The way that people are going to have an edge, and the way that people are going to be competitive in the global economy is by thinking for themselves and having original ideas. And our school system woefully underprepares them to do that. The second thing is a little bit more subtle, right? So basically, the people that made the schools were the same sorts of people who either built factories themselves, or their friends built factories, or they, they worked along, alongside people who built factories. And so they were thinking about school the way that you think about an assembly line, right? So in an assembly line, let's say you have a machine that has 10 parts, and you have to put each of the parts on the machine in order, right? So the machine rolls down the assembly line and the worker puts on the part. And that's basically what, the way that the education system works, right? A child goes to first period math and they have math installed in their head. And then they go to second period English and they have English installed in their head. And then they go to third period science and they have science installed in their head, etc., etc. The problem is that this just isn't how learning works, right? Like if you do math for 50 minutes every day, then you know, you're going to get into a groove and then right at the 50 minute mark, the bell's going to go off and you're going to have to go do something else. It's better to focus on the same thing for a big, big chunk of time. Schools also generally assume that the best way to learn something is to sit at a desk and listen to your teacher lecture. And that's not true. Studies have shown that when you listen to a lecture, you only remember about 5% of what you hear. And that's if you're actually interested in what you hear. According to science, a far better way to learn is to actually do stuff, right? Like if your brain isn't active, then you're not going to learn anything. Schools also generally assume that everyone needs to learn the same subjects, right? So everyone in high school has to learn math, everyone has to learn history, everyone has to learn chemistry, everyone has to learn English, etc., etc. But it would be way better if kids just picked what they were interested in and studied that, right? Like, you're not going to learn something that you're not interested in, first of all. And second of all, how many people actually go on to use math and chemistry and history and English in their day-to-day -day lives? This is why tons of smart people do really poorly in school, and it's also why the people who do best in school are the people who are best at following directions and not necessarily the people best at coming up with original ideas or thinking for themselves. According to Sir Ken Robinson, one of the big reasons why the standards movement in the United States failed is because the schools themselves aren't doing their jobs, right? The standards movement, if you don't know, the standards movement is like, you know, the federal government wanted to, they wanted everyone to teach the same stuff, and they wanted all the schools to measure themselves with regular tests to see if they were doing a good job. And the reason why, one of the reasons why that failed, according to Robinson, is because holding people to the standards of the education system won't make them smarter, because those standards themselves are wrong. The education system is doing a bad job, so forcing people to try harder at the education system just isn't going to cut it. Instead of forcing people to go through a system that isn't working and then punishing them when they don't go through that system successfully, we should be changing the system. 
Robinson says that instead of thinking about schools like factories, we should be thinking about schools like gardens, right? We put the kid in there and then they grow. We create the conditions for them to grow and then they grow. A school isn't a machine, it's more like an organism. Everything in a school is interwoven and everything affects each other. So you can't think about it like a factory. Instead, we need to be redesigning schools based on what we actually know about learning science and what has actually been proven to help build kids into successful adults. This is exactly what they do in Finland. Finland has some of the best schools in the world and the principles of the Finnish edu education system are how do we create the best conditions for kids to get smarter. Instead of focusing on curriculum, in Finland they focus on making the teachers really really good at teaching, right? Instead of arguing over what to teach, they argue over how do we teach it best. The rest of the world, especially the US, should do something similar. These reforms shouldn't come from the federal government because the federal government doesn't know anything about education. So who knows something about education? Well, the, the teachers and the principals and the students and the parents know about education. So they should be the ones setting the standards, designing the curriculum, and building the schools. The good news is, even within the confines of the education system as it stands right now, there are ways to improve. The book Creative Schools is littered with examples of either teachers or entire schools in low-income areas with really low high school graduation rates where almost nobody goes to college, right? Like, you would expect every school and every teacher from there to just fail miserably and they would have no chance. But a lot of them have you know, 90 plus percent high school graduation rates. Some of them even have 90 plus percent, you know, their kids go on to college rates. And how are they able to do that? Well, they do things differently. At a lot of these places, kids beg to stay at school all day. And actually one of the punishments is that you have to leave school at the time when school usually ends. One of these teachers is Rafa Ezkeith, who teaches in Koreatown in Los Angeles. Most of his students qualify for free and reduced price lunch, and they're in a demographic that drops out of high school pretty regularly and almost never goes to college. And yet, pretty much all of Rafi's students end up graduating, and a lot of them end up going to Ivy League schools. So what's his secret? Well, there's a lot of stuff. It's way too much to go into here, but part of it is that he teaches them Shakespeare, and they get so obsessed with Shakespeare, and they want to learn the Shakespeare, and it motivates them, and they do better in class. Another example of this is Mind Drive, which is an after-school program that this guy built where kids just go and they build cars together. And they get so into building the cars, it motivates them, and they're like happy again, they're, they're excited, and they start doing better in school. The point is that even if you're trapped in a system that you feel binds you, there's still something you can do that will help your kids learn better. If you're a teacher or a school principal or a superintendent or you're on a school board or whatever, don't be afraid to get creative. So. Thanks so much for watching Theo's Book Club. If you're new around here, my name's Theo. I make brief videos like this one going over the big ideas in the books that I read so that you can be like, oh, do I want to read this book for myself? And if you don't decide not to read it, you can still learn all the big ideas just from watching one short video. If you like this video, I hope you'll hit the like button down there that tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video. We should show it to more people. You can also hit the subscribe button if, there's, if, if you want to see more of these videos popping up in your feed. And if you had any profound insights or comments or you want to share something or I got something wrong, feel free to leave a comment. And until next time, think outside the box and have a great day.